Hey everyone, Glimps here, and today we're going to be talking about who you should pull in version 4.5, should you save, should, is this a spending banner? I uh, guess we're going to find out right now. So, first things first, uh, here's Chiori, we got Ido, next patch we got Nouvellet and Kazuha, right? Uh, if you are curious about the new tiny glasses that are temporary or leave of absence, we'll discuss that a little later in the video because we've been gone a while. I'll tell you all about that later. But, first off, um, Chiori, is she a must pull or is she meta or anything? Super good? No. Basically, what you are going to pull Chiori for is if you kind of want an albedo replacement or if you don't, um, if you don't have an albedo and you kind of just want someone else to cover it, um, here's albedo right here. Uh, we're going to go in, in like a minute or two, we're going to go test out the difference between albedo and Chiori right there. Um, going to see the difference between them. So I was going to get Chiori, got her on accident, did a 110 pull on the weapon banner, got her weapon as well. So... <laughs> My plan was to save for a C1 Nouvellet, but now we got Chiori, so now we're just going to save for Arlecchino. Because um, that's also coming out in 4.6, we'll discuss whether or not you should pull for her in a bit too. Here I have Ido, a uh, little biased, I have Ido, signature weapon, uh, C6, don't worry about that, and then double crown here and everything. Uh, and then we've got Nouvellet and Kazuha. So these are all pretty solid characters, like I don't think you'll really go wrong with any of these banners. Um, so Shiori is obviously the newest character, so if you kind of just want to mess around with a new character and you're kind of a veteran player, you have all the other characters, go ahead, test her out. Uh, let me, so I'm going to show you damage comparison right now between Shiori and Albedo. Um, so we're going to do base damage level first. Let's just go ahead and use a test dummy real quick while I explain this to you all. So first things first, um, like, okay, Shiori and Albedo both have their strengths and weaknesses. So first off, we're just going to go out there and we are going... This is not what I meant to go do. Uh, first things first, we're going to go ahead and test out how much damage they actually do, like, just by themselves. Uh, so right now, this is with Signature Weapon, so don't really use this too much as a uh, damage test. You know what, let me switch this off, because I only have it at 68. Let's see, can we get it to 70? Okay, this is at 70. Here you go. Um, go ahead and take a look at these stats I've got on right now. Uh, 2100 defense, 1100 attack, 57 to 215, with signature level 70, and husk, and she's 70 out of 80. So this is very, like, minimal type investment. Um, you can, if you invest just a little more, even without our signature, you'll probably do similar damage. Or, um, if you know, just, you, <laughs> just know the damage is going to be, like, around this amount, because this is nothing crazy. It's definitely... The artifacts are all right. You can either run this set, the this husk set that I have on her right now, which is this right here. You can either run these set or the golden troop set. Golden troop, troop, either or. Uh, I don't know. Um, I think it's troop, trope. I don't remember right now. Don't worry about it. Okay. So first off, um, this set's probably gonna be better than her in a lot of scenarios, but they're definitely comparable. I farm this domain already a lot for my Edo, so. You can pretty much, um, so you can see that there's at least already some investment there. So right here, first off, um, don't worry too much about like the total team damage right now. We're only looking at Chiori damage, and then we're going to teleport away, come back, and then show switch all her stuff onto Albedo, and then we're going to show you similar investment. So here you see here, let's see how much damage these little dolls do. Was that, 6k, 21? Okay, so 21, 19, 19... Oh, well, we're on her, so... 20. Okay, so... When they don't crit, they're like 6k. And then when they do crit, they're on 20. Alright, so, pretty solid. I mean, look how much HP that took down from Masanori. Let's teleport right back up here. And then, the good thing about both these characters is you can get a very accurate damage test there. Um, okay, so Chiori, I am level 70 at 80, talent level's 8. And then you're gonna see Albedo right over here. I have the same exact thing. I have talent levels 8. We're not worrying about the normal attack right now. Talent levels 8. Um, so here's my albedo and everything right now. Actually, don't worry about that. I've switched a bunch of stuff over to her to test out this damage right here. Um, okay, so we're just going to give them the same weapon and we're going to keep everything the same because they're same level, same talent, same artifacts. Right? I'd say that's pretty fair. Let's go ahead. We're going to put the husk set on. We are basically just going to go take everything directly from Chiori because this overall did give us the better ratio with it. Um, ideally, you might want to actually go through and switch out some things with more crit rate, just in general, so you're kind of more consistent with it all. 
but I mean, so I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna show you right now the same case scenarios for these, and then I'm gonna show you some different case scenarios. Uh, go ahead and turn this off. Okay, actually, I don't know what piece Choi has, so we're gonna filter this. Um, so yeah, pretty much basic, the, the base main case scenario that you'd use either of these characters for is originally just like a fourth slot in the Geo team that you kind of amp up with Goro and you have doing damage for you at the same time as everything else. All right, oh, I'll actually switch her off. So, I mean, you can use her as a main DPS. I don't, not really a fan myself because the cooldowns get tricky and everything. Uh, I'm gonna first show you the difference between the two and then we're gonna go through and do uh, some nuances with her kit, some different things you can try out. So, a lot of fun overall. And then we're gonna kind of talk about Edo. I've talked about Edo on this channel, so that's why I'm kind of pushing it back a little bit. Um, because I have like full Edo dedicated videos. If you if you guys come here for that, go ahead and check that out. Um, okay, let's see. So pretty much last time, we just did that, and bam. And let's see what his do. 17k. His attacks are pretty. Oh, is it in sync? Let's see. 17. 17. It's like. And then when it doesn't crit, it's like 4k. Okay, so overall, pretty consistent. Um, at very minimal investment, it doesn't appear to make too much of a difference. But uh, let's teleport away real quick, and then I'll tell you guys the case point. So as you can see, obviously, Shory did do a bit more damage. Um, so these characters, kind of all sorted out, will... Um, they'll do about the same, right? It's not like you getting Chiori is gonna crazily increase your Geo teams or she's like something you need. If you like the character, pull for her. Do I recommend her for people that don't care too much about her character, or like don't think her kit looks too fun? Uh, no, like if you wanted Albedo for something, go ahead, just sure, give Chiori a shot or just pull on the Albedo banner that's out right now, but don't spend too much time like focusing on either one of these units because honestly, they ve seem very interchangeable in damage. Like it, it is noticeable that Chiori is slightly better but it's not crazy or anything. Uh, this sword is pretty good for him if you're like a huge Albedo lover. Go ahead, go ahead, get it, man. Like it's not <laughs> definitely not necessary or anything. Don't feel obligated to pull for that. Uh, it's a pretty cool weapon overall, though. So I have this weapon and Edo's. I just really like this. Uh, just that, I guess, group of weapons, kind of the with the handle all like the torn, crackling magma rock type thing. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and just switch everything back with Chiori right here. Um, actually, we need to do this on her because I don't think... Oh, no. No, the set works pretty well, actually. Okay, we go... Husk. <laughs> I thought Chiori had that. That's fine. Okay, we're just going to go switch everything over. Just before I forget where everything was. Um, so, yeah, this is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to rebuild Chiori later because... I kind of like having my Obedo built as well. <laughs> so we talked about the similar cases right there, how it's pretty much going to be a lot of similar things. Uh, I just switched these over one for one so you guys can kind of get an exact artifact comparison. But there's definitely some nuances to both these characters. Like you're not going to run... Okay, one thing that's good about Albedo is you... Okay, yeah, I forgot to turn that off. I thought I did. Um, one thing that's really good about Albedo is that you go ahead and... Okay, that's pretty legit there because he's on field now. We can go ahead and switch him off. Albedo, very consistent. You can kind of just throw him on any team. One problem with Chiori is that... Here, I'll give you a quick demonstration. So Chiori, overall, pretty cool. Uh, she has some fun mechanics. Look at this. So you, you tap E, and then you have this one little doll. If you want a second doll, you need to have another Geo Construct. And then it doesn't really stack after that or anything. It's not like you get more Geo Constructs, you get more characters. Unless you get Constellation and everything, you can kind of get more dolls, more speed, more damage overall. But don't worry about Constellations for her unless you just really love the character. I think her design's really cool. Um, you can't really see her shoes here. Let's see. Show the shoes a little better. There you go. It's kind of like their floating platform things. I don't know. Uh, they're cool, though. Uh, <laughs> she's kind of like a dual wielder, same thing as I'll hate them. Something that's also, I know a lot of people, if you like dual wielders, go ahead. But here's the thing. So Albedo, if you just want to throw Albedo in a team, gets a little bit extra damage. 
Um, go ahead. That's what I do sometimes if I'm kind of being lazy and just want something that I could just press the E, swap off, and I not worry about, not touch. Um, that's what I do with Albedo, where you can just throw it into any team. The problem with Chiori here, though, is that her needing that extra Geo Construct definitely limits the teams that she can be played in. Like, okay, so you just want to play her in a Navia team where you want a bunch of different elements. Not the best for Chiori here because Navia doesn't make Geo Constructs. Then you're going to have a third Geo character and it just doesn't work out. Um, so basically, scenario, if you're not already playing someone in the team that wants another Geo Construct, you probably don't want to throw Chiori in for that little bit extra damage with the two things going. Just just do one with um just use albedo for characters like that one other thing that's really important about albedo that um actually kind of helped a lot of my characters out for a while like when they weren't built properly is i believe it says one yeah okay look every time you use all all the party members get 125 elemental mastery so i kind of use this as a crutch for my hutao whenever i was playing it and I'd use this and I didn't really have any EM pieces or any good EM sands or anything like that. So I would just run the double geo with Albedo, get the extra EM, it worked great. And you can kind of focus a little bit more on H, uh, HP and other like offensive stats here. So characters like that, they need EM teams, Albedo is going to be better. Chiori, like I said, once again, overall more damage, um, a little bit more speed with it. So she's pretty good. Like you, you do, um, the, the damage numbers were pretty similar, but one thing that you also talk about is that Shiori seemed to hit more often because there is two of them. So it's something you also don't really think about. Um, let me show you. Okay, so look at this. Shiori, you go here, look at this. Now you got Geo Infusion. You're like Kaching, I'll hate them type character. It can do some damage. Like it's. Don't mean DPS her. And, and <laughs> unless you really like the character. I, it's never something I'm going to recommend, though. Like that's. It's it's a clunky mess and it's <laughs> just don't worry about that. So Chiori overall, um, she's definitely a really fun character to play. Like look at how cool that dual wielding looks. It's almost like she's got the scissors, um, just the way she like cuts because she's a fashion designer pretty much. So yeah, I mean I probably run this team, uh, especially with the full Geo team. I'm gonna run Chiori in it because it is slightly more damage and I have her and her weapon now. So like why the hell not? Um, it's just being stubborn now if I don't run that. Overall, pretty cool. Um, yeah, one thing I would say for sure is that if you want one that's just like more damage overall, Chiori is strictly better, it seems here, in most cases. Except for like the the specific like case destination things I talked about. Now, we're going to get into the second half of the version because... Oh, wait, well, actually, first half, that was between Chiori and Albedo. Uh, same thing between Chiori and Ido. Here's what we're talking about now. Um, <laughs> this depends what you need for your account, right? Like, okay, say... Okay, if you don't have any supports or anything, maybe go Chiori. If you only have, like, a couple Geo characters, you want to start working towards that better Geo team. If you, I don't know, running DPS Noel, Ningguang, Navia... Uh, actually, not Navia with her, but... Um, so you want to run, like, those mono Geo teams. Yeah, sure, go go ahead and get Chiori. She's pretty fun. Um... I know a lot of people like, if you like Geo, you like Geo, you know? Like, if you don't like Geo, don't pull on this banner anyways. There's no point. Ego is one of my favorite characters. Uh, he is the only non-standard character that I have at C6, and that was due to uh, gambling addiction and insane luck. Like, that was over, like, three reruns or so, where I was saving up everything, and then I would spend it all my primos on Ido. Just, and I got super lucky in a lot of that. I'm very fortunate to have C6, um, so now that the damage is not going to be exactly the same when I do showcase Ido. But overall, pretty solid. Um, if you don't have a DPS that's like really like a hyper carry type and you're kind of into that, you like Geo, you kind of like the unga bunga of not thinking about reactions. Geo basically doesn't even have a reaction, right? So say you're really into that, go ahead and get Ido. Like I, I recommend it to most people, just know that he's not going to be crazy or anything. Nuvolet's right around the corner. So if you're a meta slave or if you're like really care about the numbers and or you need something to really help you kill like certain types of bosses maybe Ida's not the best pick for you but for those of you that like kind of have things i mean if you need a dps in general Ido's definitely gonna be a better for your account than shiori like uh one thing i love about Ido that a lot of some people don't really mention is he's a defense scaling unit pretty much right so you stack a bunch of defense on him and then him as your dps he can take a lot of hits and deal a lot of damage out so basically what you call a bruiser in video games uh, so he's pretty cool. I love the way that his weapon looks. It looks like that's so sick right there. It's kind of got like the Oni eyes and the horns and everything. So yeah, but that is a little biased. Uh, mine's also C6, which I'll show you guys the damage in a second of like the upper end of potential. Maybe you can get a little bit more damage than that, but not by much. 
um, I'm be real with you. That's like the upper limit of Ito's availability because he has <laughs> definitely max in, uh, investment. And even then, some things Nuvolet clears faster, which is coming in the second half of the banner. Uh, so pretty much Nuvolet, if you if you guys like his design at all, um, pull for him. I know he's he's very intricately designed. Like look at all the small details and everything and throughout his robes or judges court whatever you want to call it um so he's really well designed if you like his character pull from i'll show you guys some damage with him i'm sure you guys have seen nouvellet gameplay by now but i'll kind of talk about some nuances of the team a little bit uh this is going very in depth if there's anything specifically you guys want to know about let me know down in the comments down below and i'll answer things like on a case-by-case -case basis you're like oh what do you think about this if i'm missing this type of character or whatever but yeah overall uh nouvellet arguably one of the best dps in the game <clears throat> personally <clears throat> excuse me um i use him in the abyss sometimes he is great probably someone like the best dps in the game i'd say like i'll hate them nouvellet um Hutao, but she needs a lot of things so i probably wouldn't recommend her but probably like these are two um him with the couple cons like those are what things i would recommend to people to play uh, Rao's pretty versatile. People complain a lot about his C1 and everything. I actually don't think you need it. I tried him a bit before. C1 definitely does help a bit, but it's not necessary at all. Like, um, I played on a friend's account with C0 Ryo as well. That They had it all built up. It's fine. You don't need C1 on him. Okay, distracted. We're talking about something else. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, like, Nuvalet, I'll hate them. Uh, sometimes Hu Tao. Characters like that are kind of, like, better DPS you want to keep an eye out for. But once again, Ito's pretty solid. Like, let me show you guys some of the damage right here. <clears throat> um, so yeah, first half right here. If you need, I mean, if you're kind of on the fence or anything, or you have all the characters you need, or none of these interest you, this is perfectly a good half to just save your primos for, right? Um, none of these characters are detrimental for you to not have. Let's go ahead and take a look right here with the C6. You know, I'll show you guys the ult. Look at that. It's pretty cool. 80k, damn. That's level 8 talents, level 70 weapon. I do plan on getting that weapon up a bit more. Uh, there's some 61Ks, 55K. So Ito can be pretty damn strong, right? Like, go ahead and if you invest into him and you, like, want to put the resources into that, you can make him very effective as a DPS. Personally, he's, like, easily my top three favorite characters to play. Now let me show you guys a new Valette team. Um, this is the team that I run on, like, a day-to-day -day basis. Is this his best team? No, but here's the beauty of Nuvolet. It, these three characters don't really matter, right? Like, um, so I'm at C0, which means that I kind of want these three to all be separate. If you get C1, that's a pretty good constellation to go for. Um, so how Nuvolet works is there's three stacks he builds up. Uh, each time he triggers a Hydro reaction, he gets one of those stacks. So Hydro, this team's pretty easy to trigger all the reactions with. It's kind of, you can kind of set things very particular the way you would like them. So, this is a team I recommend. Uh, Raiden, or Official, is actually better here, but I accidentally pulled a Yamiko, and I have her weapon now, and I'm not going to let it go to waste. So, I've been playing her on this team, uh, just just because I want to use her somewhere. All right? <laughs> so, over here, um, pretty solid stuff. This is just a buffer, and this is resistance interruption. Oh, and also, once you get C1, you get more resistance interruption, so this isn't as necessary. You can kind of replace them with, like, Farina and a healer. Like, Farina and Baiju I would do if I had C1, and that would get you more damage probably overall. Uh, not probably, like, almost most definitely. Yeah, that'd be more damage overall. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this team that I kind of run on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's show you guys. Uh, so once again, I showed you C0. He has R1. His weapon is pretty damn solid. If you don't get this, though, you can also do the Fontaine Craftable, or another good option for you would be... Um, Where's that? This weapon right here. This weapon's pretty good for him as well. There's a lot of different options. You can just kind of throw in anything that has like crit or HP percentage, that type of thing. And then, uh, real quick to cover Ido, you you just just run him on Husk unless you want to run him on Marsh, I'll say. Don't recommend personally. Uh, but Ido, you kind of want this weapon, or if not that, then just run this one, right? Those are the main ones you want to go on. Um, I mean, like, I've seen people run that. Honestly, not a fan. Uh, oh, this weapon right here, actually. So run any of these three. There's like a free to play, small spender, and kind of whale options, I guess. <laughs> but um, I mean, they're all comparable. This one's 
probably your best bet if you don't want to go for signature by far though because this weapon overall really good you get some extra crit rate and everything everything bounces out and that's kind of your budget option but don't get me wrong like you'll still be able to pull some things off like that is, is with him as well so yeah there's my ito here's my new valet right here 40 to 82 and then the crit rate doesn't matter as much with mara chasse it gives you a bunch of crit rate that's you run them on the set what are you doing if you're not and then yeah there's a the signature i told you the other one you could run uh so yeah there's the stats overall I have him pretty well invested, I'd say. Let me show you guys some of the damage he can hit right here. But overall, yeah, the, you, he's definitely one of the easiest to play and the best numbers in the game. So, like, if you guys are just looking for a DPS to run... I should have swirled right there. That's fine. If you guys are just looking for a DPS to run, this, this is the one you want to get. Because, like... Let's see. Like, personally, even for mine, my HP's a little bit on the lower side for Nuvolet. It could be better, and I messed up the swirl right there. So it's like... <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's just kill him right here. Don't worry about the numbers. Let me redo this, and now I'm going to show you guys uh, with the proper rotation. <clears throat> but, yeah. So definitely running, like, domains and stuff. He's super brain dead to play. Just throw Nuvolet and Zhongli together, and you just zone out you can other options are like Dehya or if you want to run him with child that's a pretty solid option uh, okay let's swirl that there you go that was better look at that it's like that right there is pretty pretty damn good damage and like if i had the ult there i could have just easily went over but like i mean those numbers speak for itself oh, i wasn't paying attention Okay, um, yeah, he also kind of self-heals, which I'm sure you guys saw. He self-heals, self-does his HP and everything. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of nuance to his kit. It's pretty simple, though. Like, if that looks boring to you to kind of just stand there. I mean, you don't have to wait for this to charge when you have those orb things. But you stand there, kind of aim this at the enemy right here. And then it resets. You use your E. And then that gives you more of the orbs to charge up again just really quickly. So if that does look boring to you, once again, perfectly fine to skip. There's a very interesting character that I had a dream about coming out very recently, or very shortly, named Arla Chino, Arla Kino, whatever you want to call her. Uh, I like Arla Chino. I don't know. We'll see closer it gets. Um, I had a dream about her kit, and she looks very damn interesting, and I think her weapon looks pretty solid on her. Uh, so go ahead, test that out. Like, I think... Uh, she looks like she's gonna hit some pretty good numbers. So honestly, just wait a little bit closer to the end then, if you kind of between these two. So Kazuha here is something else I want to talk about. I have a pretty damn good invested Kazuha. All right. Um, overall, my Kazuha could not um, doesn't get too much better with constellations because my Kazuha. I do have him at C two to be fair, but C two right here. Here, let me let me show you guys the HP mechanic right here. Let me just shield and do this slowly. Okay, so watch this. I use his E. Look at, okay. You guys see these three orbs, and then look at my HP. I'm just gonna hold charge attack. Then they get absorbed, and my HP goes up like that. HP stops draining after 50%, right? So that means also like, okay. Let me just re shield here. So say you're just running by some helitrolls and stuff, and you don't really care about fighting them. You just go like this, boom. And then you get your HP back, and then you can dash out of it, run away, and then you're, it's just like free healing. It's super cool. Um, so yeah, that, if you're looking for like a pretty fun character, in my opinion, go Nuvolet. He's he's helped farm things pretty pretty quickly. Now, I'm going to show you guys an example with Kazuha right here. Um, let's go find a good test on me. Who do I want to show this on? Okay, I'll show it on a child team. Okay, do I recommend hyper carry child team? No, but that's how I like to play it. That was the wrong teleport. Okay, so Kazuha definitely helps you hit some big numbers, uh, but he's not as necessary anymore. Like when he first came out, it was kind of uh he was like the slot in guarantee for most characters but now i mean there's they've released a lot of new characters that don't really rely on kazuha or don't even want him just because it's kind of hard for the rotation like huta is one of those characters that you just can't really play kazuha with so kazuha is basically just a damage amplifier right you can almost slot him into most elemental character teams that are not like physical or geo damage like dendro okay so watch this 
Child hit. Four, 42. 5,000. Uh, no crit. 4,000. 4,000, right? Okay, so then we'll go ahead. Just swirl it. We're trying to be gentle and not kill this guy. Okay, then we'll just let this stuff reset. We'll swirl it again after, don't worry. Okay, so we swirl, right? And then, watch this. 7,500, 75. So from 4,000 to 7,500. So you see, like, uh, he just... <laughs> Cause are overall pretty crazy. Uh, the constellations here didn't actually affect that damage at all. So if, with a C, C0 Kazuha, you get, like, a crazy amount of damage buff, right? So this just decreases the cooldown of the skill and lets you use it after the ult. So you can go jump, E, and then ult, and then jump, E again, like, right after. And then this right here, when you're in your ult, just gives you... Um, Increases his own EM by 200 and increases your elemental mastery if you're in the field by 200. Alright, so pretty much everyone just gets 200 extra EM when in its field. That's cool, but not super, uh, not crazy or anything. Kazuha gives you a damage buff based on your EM. Once you reach over 1000 EM, I'm pretty sure that's the cap for the damage buff that you can give. I think it's, is it a passive? Um, let's see. Okay, here you go. After triggering a swirl reaction, he does 0.04% elemental damage of his own EM. Like, he just gives everyone that elemental damage, right? Is it still active? Let's see. Uh, Hydro damage, is it one of... Uh, I don't think that's still active. Okay, wait. So, let's go ahead and try this out really quickly. So, you guys kind of see that my child had, like, I think it was 105 EM. Where'd he go? Why is my brain not braining? <laughs> what? Oh, okay, it's over here. I'm all thrown off with this new area. Okay. So, now go ahead and take a quick look at how he affects this elemental stuff. Okay. So we see Child has. Okay, he's at 99.4 hydro damage bonus. All right, then we swirl Hydro, go back to him. Now he's at 139. So it's literally just extra damage bonus. It's almost like an extra goblet you got there. Um, so yeah, and then like, look at that. Even with the shield, after we swirled everything, look at how these damage numbers do. Like, that's pretty solid, I mean. So Kazuo is damage amplify, right? If you have certain DPS characters, like Ayaka, Child, uh, if you want to use it for Zhang Ling, if you want to use it... Um, let me give you a quick rundown. Watch this. This is going to be speed run. Okay. Pretty much good DPS characters are characters that he works with. If you do want to play them, like I'm going to say Kaya, right? But he's using Kaya. If you're using Kaya, Kaya, Beta, Zhengling, Xingqiao. Uh, Bennett's actually pretty good with him too for like just swirling really quickly. Uh, Deluke wants him. Kaching does. Child works really well with Kazuo. If you want a good child team, a Ganyu, like not Hu Tao actually. Uh, Ayaka, Yoimiya on certain teams, kind of weird. Uh, Raiden Shogun, if you want to do big, big numbers with C2, yeah. Um, let's see. Like, yeah, it, she, she does buff Yaimiko a little bit. Same thing with Nilo, but like, you're not really playing them that way. Uh, Deha, if you want to use her like that, I guess that's fine. Uh, Liney, I mean, yeah, Liney works great with him. Gaming. And Farina. Like, a lot of the characters, right? But um, now with Farina, she actually kind of buff. Um, Farina kind of replaces him in a lot of different teams that you want to use now. So you can kind of use like one on each side or anything. Uh, if you don't, ha if you don't have enough proper buffers, Kazuo is definitely one I recommend that you guys kind of look into. So I think that he's definitely buffed a lot of. Count okay, like look at these. Oh wait, look at these teams real quick. So you guys can kind of see. Um, I mean, other than DPS, because you only want, there's only really one, right? But, like, look at how much this speaks for itself. There's Kazuha, 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 um, Kazuha. There's, like, a lot of different teams we've been messing around with. So, Kazuha is very useful, but like I'm saying, there's a lot of teams that don't actually rely on him anymore or have the space for him. I'm just saying, if you do want Kazuha and, like, you have some of the teams that I showed you that you could go back and look at right now, or if you don't want to build him, Run him on Viridescent. You want the Viridescent set, that's the best. Uh, you can also run his signature weapon. 
this is my favorite weapon for him. It gives a lot of extra ER. I want to get some more refinements on it, but I mean, for now, this is what we're stuck with. Um, so yeah, you want this weapon pretty much. His signature, which is fine. I don't recommend you go for it. You can go for this one. You can go for sacrificial, which I've heard people say they just like to try out uh, for to use his E twice. I mean, if you go ahead, if you want, I guess. I mean, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, Favoni is pretty good on him too. But personally, this is the best one in my opinion. I like this one even more than his signature. So I don't really see the need to go for a signature. I got C2 and I got this weapon. That's what I think is the best you can get for him. And then after that, constellations don't really matter too much. You can kind of make them into some DPSy stuff. It's it's whatever. Don't worry about those right now. So yeah, overall, he's pretty damn solid. Those are the main characters that are in 4.5. So who should you pull for? If you... Okay, say you have everyone you want and you just want someone to tell you who to pull for. If you don't have any of these four characters, I think your best bet is to first... If you have all the DPS and everything, of course, already, if you have everything you need, nothing of this is what you need, what I just think is the most fun to put in the most amount of teams, I think it'd probably go, you'd want to go Kazuha, then you would go Nuvalet, and then I'd say Ido, Chiori, right? Chiori, she's fine, um, but I mean, there's only so many teams you can put her on. I definitely am glad I got her after the fact because, um, because I like Geo teams. I like playing Geo. I wasn't really going to go for her, like I said earlier, but it's just, <laughs> I just had a bunch of wishes and I'm like, okay, let's just, uh, I wanted to get the five free ones from the shop, so I just spent some on her and I did get her, even though I think all these characters are C6. So I got her pretty early and same thing, I got the weapon pretty early. Now, really quick talk, should you spend any of your primos on this? No. Like for 90% of people, no, not really worth it. I selected this, I did a couple 10 pulls just in case. I knew I wasn't going to get anything. I didn't get anything. Um, I want to keep pulling, but I I need to save for Arlecchino now. Just because my dream set is pretty sick. Like, I don't know, maybe if you, like, I love being a Eula main and you want to get a couple more Eulas, that's fine. Uh, I don't think you should try to go for, like, Deluc, Jean, or Mona. I mean, unless you really like one of them or you want Jean for your Furuna teams or whatever. Otherwise, like, just get Baiju. It's, it's fine. Uh, or Shen Yun, if you want that specific thing. But, like, none of these characters you should really go for cons for. I want to go for Dilute cons, but I know that's not smart because I'll get them eventually. So, re remember everything. Just kind of be patient. You'll get them eventually. And none of these characters are really game-changing. And I think that's also why they're so happy to put them here. Um, so, especially for characters, don't pull for. For weapons, these can actually be better than the weapon banner. So, like, uh, for this weapon or Tainari's are, like, some of the only ones I would recommend you doing it for. Uh, some good ones right here. Like, this is pretty solid for Bennett, I guess. So is this one. If you, if you want more ER on Bennett, go this. If you want more attack bonus, do that. I don't recommend getting this Song of Broken Pines for Eula. It's not even the best one on here. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure Gravestone, you do more damage on Eula with Gravestone than you would actually her signature. Gravestone's pretty good. I have two of them that I've gotten just accidentally as the years go on. I mean, I'm happy with it. I, I do like this weapon, and I just wanted to see if I got lucky. But like I'm saying, I didn't. This is fine. I have it at like level 20 on nobody. Same thing with this weapon. It's like there's nobody that really needs it. This weapon is actually a pretty solid DPS option for some characters. Um, Lost Prayers of the Sacred Sacred Wind. I have it on my um, Wanderer currently. So it's a pretty good one like Yamiko or uh, Ryoth is Lee. Whoever you want to play. Uh, this is just an attack buff. Good for like Charlotte, I think. I don't know. What's this? Skyward Atlas? It's fine. This weapon's pretty solid, like Tainari, Ganyu. Uh, th th yeah, that's just pretty much what it's good for. If you don't care about those characters, don't worry about it. I'd be happy to get this as well for my Tainari. But, like I'm saying, no, I'm not going to lose sleep over not having it. <clears throat> I just have the Battle Pass weapon on him, Viridescent Venerare. This one right here, Skyward Harp. This weapon's also pretty solid, uh, pretty good for, like, Child, uh, Kujo Sara. Good stat stick, best for DPS Amber if you want to give it a shot. Uh, Farzana, maybe. Yeah, um, I'd be happy to get it, but once again, guys, there's a pretty good chance you might get it from missing over here, or you can also miss over here. So, don't get your hopes too high or anything. Don't be thinking too much about it. Uh, that's pretty much what you spend your primos on, if you really want to spend something on this patch. But, now we're going to talk about my dream of Arlecchino. Uh, let's see, how long is this video already? 34 minutes, okay. Uh, quick update about the glasses. Uh, these are temporary. I would take these off, but I can't see anything, and then I couldn't see the screen. So, 
pretty much how this went. This is quick story time, guys, if you care at all. If not, skip ahead like a minute or two, and then I'll be talking about Arlecchino if you don't care. Um, so yeah, I've been, I kind of wear like half work contacts and glasses. It's a weird mixed thing. Uh, but basically, my mom's kind of like, oh, you're getting about the right age for LASIK and everything. This can count as like an early birthday present for in a couple months. So we're going in, trying to get LASIK. Uh, they said I'm not a good candidate for that. I'm a good candidate for ICL which is uh, implantable columnar lens. Okay, I'll just start these commissions while I talk to you guys, actually. Um, implantable columnar lens. So it's literally just like a lens that they put between the lens of your eye and the iris. There's a small little area. They just put it in there, and it's biocompatible um, because it's columnar. It's like collagen in a polymer. So overall, it's pretty interesting. It's kind of like a bionic eye type thing. But, I mean, it's it's like very soft material. It's, you won't even notice it's there. This is one of the, it's like, and it's, I'm not really worried about it because it's one of the safest procedures, like pretty much all the eye procedures and everything are some of the safest procedures on the market. <laughs> some of the safest procedures on the market. So once again, um, it is slightly more than LASIK, but they said I'm not the best candidate for LASIK. So this is what they recommended. And I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, it made sense. They showed me the pictures of everything. They explained it very well. So yeah, definitely. Um... I think it sounds pretty good. You guys can kind of see some Kazuho group in here. Uh, so they're gonna call me on Monday, they said, and then if everything works out, if they have everything in stock, then I'll have my appointment for Wednesday, actually, to get the surgery done, and then I might have a couple days without it. But, um, so yeah, for the past few weeks, I've been having finals and a bunch of homework, because uh, for the rest of this week and next week, I'm on spring break now, because I had my last final yesterday. Feels great. Um, so yeah, pretty much. Uh, I don't have the best eyes for LASIK, and if everything works out on Wednesday, I'll be out for a couple days. But I've I was wearing these other glasses for a while, of like my old glasses from first year of high school, and they kind of helped. They said they corrected my vision to like uh, 2100, which I mean isn't terrible, but you shouldn't really you should see better than that, you know? Dude, so you should see better than that. I mean, obviously, you should be 2020. That's like the baseline you should have. So uh, my vision wasn't great, and I couldn't really see anything. I couldn't read anything, see anything on the computer screen, so I couldn't really make videos at the time uh, for the past few weeks. And then I just recently, this last week, right before, I mean, I took some finals, and then, man, that thing's kind of annoying. Does that annoy you guys too? Tell me. Tell me if this thing right here annoys you. Like, literally, just let me press claim rewards and then claim from right there that that would have been so much easier but instead you just like to be obnoxious <laughs> so one thing that's definitely unique is um what was i talking about mm. oh yeah so i couldn't really see anything uh, they just gave me these loners which they like put a lens in i don't know if you guys can see on the camera but look at how thick these are right i think i'm pointing this in I really can't see what you guys see, so I'm gonna hope this works. But it comes out on like both sides of the glasses already. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but like, it's <laughs> so it comes out through both sides of the glasses. Luckily, this is only for like a week or two, pretty temporary. Uh, so I really hope they have everything on Monday, so I can kind of these kind of squeeze my head. These random glasses they gave me, but <laughs> but yeah. So uh, for those of you that are curious, they told me that my vision was. Uh, negative 10 in this eye and negative 9 in my left eye. So, negative 10 is pretty bad. I'm gonna, <laughs> those of you that don't know, and those of you that do know, yeah, negative 10, pretty bad. Um, I mean, there's definitely people with worse vision out there, but negative 10 is definitely not something that you really want to have. So, I think this will be life-changing if I actually do get to see things properly and not have to be so reliant upon glasses like this. Um, yeah, because honestly, it's crazy. Just thinking about being able to wake up and see everything. Okay, that's crazy. Sorry, this video is 38 minutes now. Um, that was pretty quick, but I, it just seems insane to me. My brain just can't really process that. So, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Hopefully all that goes well. Okay, now quick talk and thoughts about Arla Chino. Uh, what do I think about Arla Chino? I think she looks amazing. Like her kit looks super fun, kind of intricate. Uh, I already wanted to go for all the Harbingers anyway, so I was gonna go for her. But after seeing certain things, let's just say that her weapon is very unique in my dream. Uh, there's some things that only she can do with this weapon. So I'll go more into that later. Um, 
if you if you don't like leaks close your eyes for like two seconds if you do like leaks and kind of want to know just exactly what i'm talking about here's the weapon and then when she's ooh, <laughs> there you go that's it all right here you go that's it okay you can open your eyes <laughs> overall pretty cool um her kit looks really unique i've heard that her damage numbers might be better than hu tao's so we'll really have to see how that goes i like playing hu tao uh, i don't believe she's actually constellation dependent or weapon dependent because she has a lot of different options there's some teams i kind of want to work on with her but i don't know i think at the end of the day she seems like she'd be a pretty fun character um yeah that pretty much wraps it up that's how you should spend your primos on over the next few patches 4.5 4.6 I'll talk to you guys more about 4.6 patches as it does get a little closer. Hope you guys like the shirt. Demon Slayer Core. Uh, pretty cool. Those of you that didn't see the new movie, it was, it was pretty sick. But, I mean, you don't have to go spend money at the theater if you don't want to. Just wait for it to come out. Uh, I might go for, film another video right now for uh, the Leeway episode of soloing every boss in Leeway. Because I did that with Monstat. It was pretty fun. A uh, little bit worried about Ajdaha. We, I don't know if I'll be able to do that with one character. We'll see. I don't know. Um epic gamer moment coming up next episode so yeah for those of you that do want to see i'm gonna go film that right now i know i might schedule it for like a day or two and after this we'll see uh, i'm gonna go try that right now <laughs> if not uh you know what yeah let's just let's leave it at that i'm gonna leave it there i'm gonna go film the leeway episode hopefully still keep these energies high it is kind of late not too late it's 11 50 a.m uh, 11 50 p.m so later than usual or earlier than usual that i film but yeah i uh, just want to say thank you all so much for uh, coming back after the short little break I had where I couldn't see my screen and then I had all these finals and stuff. But spring break now, so that's good. Uh, I am very excited. Hopefully next week my LASIK gets fixed on Wednesday. I don't know. I'll keep you guys updated. So, yeah. All right. I uh, hope you guys all have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Peace.